At the end of June, we're now officially halfway through 2016, and that means five more brilliant indie games to share with you. But first, let's get some news and some honourable mentions. After a wave of negative reviews, Superhot's recent Steam user rating has plummeted to 56% positive. The backlash is seemingly a reaction to the Superhot's team decision to make the VR version of the game Oculus Rift exclusive. The Superhot team have responded by claiming the game will eventually be available for all VR headsets. An American Ford dealership unwittingly uses Firewatch artwork as a background for a marketing campaign. The dealership has since apologised and taken down the image. Firewatch developer Campo Santo will not be pursuing any further action. E3 happened last month, so let's quickly go through the big indie headlines. Severed will be coming to the Wii U and 3DS this year. Grow Home has a sequel called Grow Up, coming out before the end of August. We Happy Few will come out on Xbox One Game Preview in July. And Stardew Valley is coming to the three major home consoles at the end of the year. Party Pooper is a little free-to-play puzzle game in which you need to make all the party people scram. The animations are terrific, the characters are silly, and the whole thing is super charming. Planet Centauri is a delightfully pixelated adventure in which you explore the wild, tame creatures, farm and craft spells. Future updates intend to bring more features such as building and protecting your own village. Glory of Victus is a medieval MMORPG with some gobsmacking graphics. It needs a little while longer in early access however, as its open PvP world is fairly sparse of personality and life. The Last Leviathan promises to be the aquatic version of Besiege. Promises is the key word there, because without multiplayer or an actual Leviathan, it's going to have a long stay in early access. After finally getting their hands on Mighty Number no. 9, critics and fans have been left disappointed with the final product. A lot of that is due to how lofty expectations were. Trying to revive the spirit of one of video games most beloved franchises and then delaying its release multiple times left little room for error. Criticism has touched on pretty much every area. From the outset, we were never on board with the art style and the final game's presentation fails to evoke any character. It just feels bland. Its gameplay, however, whilst nothing spectacular, is solid. The absorption dash is fun to use, but the level design makes it a liability. It's really not a bad side-scrolling platformer, but there are better alternatives on the market. Ultimately, it comes nowhere near the territory of Mega Man, and that's what Mighty No. 9's Kickstarter backers were promised. We should also point out that the PS Vita, 3DS and 360 versions are still not out yet with no firm release date. The much adored Rogue Lands has graduated from Steam Early Access and into full release. The game is a kind of spiritual successor to creator Sean Yun's other game, Magisite. It has the same art and is the same blend of roguelike and RPG. In short, Rogue Lands combines the perilous and arcade nature of roguelikes with the crafting and mining of a Terraria or Minecraft. Its greatest strength is perhaps its multiplayer, which can result in great teamwork or chaotic yet hilarious sabotage. Rogue Lands isn't anything groundbreaking, but offers affordability, a lot of playtime, and great multiplayer. After a year on early access, Oil Tycoon Simulator Turmoil has risen to the surface of full release. The game is incredibly simple and chilled out, whilst constantly providing new objectives and rewarding effort. Set during the American oil rush at the turn of the 20th century, your goal is to get that oil. Setting up a plantation, you'll want to make an efficient pipe network to extract oil quickly. 
With all the newfound oil, the local town will grow. There, you can outbid rivals for new land, make deals with shady folks in the saloon, and invest in natural gas to boost oil prices. Also, if you get enough shares, you can become town mayor. Relaxing, simple, easy on the eyes, and with enough competition to keep you engaged, developer Gamius has struck it rich with turmoil. Recently, it feels like every second game we feature has their protagonist crash land on an alien planet. Not to mention, the gaming market seems saturated with survivor horror titles. Yet despite being both of these things, the Solus Project stands out as a gripping single player experience. Its beautiful environments are brought to terrifying life by the escalations of its brilliant score and the menacing weather that shifts from tornado to meteor shower. These weather changes can happen at any time, with each bringing a new danger. On top of that, players have to stay on top of hunger, thirst, internal temperature and fatigue, which creates a constant underlying pressure to survive. There are puzzles that whilst middling are never annoying, and a story that adds enough intrigue to keep exploring. In all, the Solus Project doesn't provide the most dynamic of survival gameplay, but it's one of those games you play just to immerse yourself in its world and atmosphere alone. Released in 2010 when indie games started to hit the mainstream, Limbo has become one of the most influential indie games of all time. Now six years later, developer Playdead return with Inside, a similarly creepy puzzle platformer. It takes the bulk of Limbo's framework and then takes it in new directions. For instance, whilst the shadows of Limbo left it up to our imaginations to guess at what disaster had taken place in its world, Inside's increased realism makes for a more confronting experience with its subject matter. The story is also more complex. Where Limbo focused on the rescuing of the protagonist's sister, Inside's narrative is greater than any one character's journey. The game's mystery is palatable and the reveals just as satisfying. To talk anymore would ruin Inside for you. This is a game you want to go in blind to and just discover for yourself. If you're on PC, you'll have to wait until July 8th for the game to come out on Steam. But if you've got an Xbox One, you can try out Inside right now. That's it guys, thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.